Tell me about uh, Neil's uh, near-death experience. We were going to a visitation and went to my daughter's to clean up. While I was in the shower, he was sitting on the couch. When I came out, he was blue, not breathing, and his eyes were not reacting to light. I did CPR on him while my daughter called the 911 and got the ambulance there. And we got him back, we got him to the hospital, to the ER, and they said it was an arrhythmia that had caused this. And he was fine. But some days later, he told me a story about what he saw. And he said that he went to this wonderful place that was full of light and warmth and people that he knew all gathered around. And his mother, who he had not been getting on well with at the time of her death, was there with open arms to greet him. And he just really came out of it feeling like he did not want to leave at all. He was being drawn there. And I, (laughs) when I evidently was doing CPR on him, I said, don't you dare leave me, Neil Sayers. And he, you know, he, he rejoined us. But he's had that sense of wonder ever since. I was feeling real bad for several days, and I, I wanted to go to uh, a friend of mine's sister uh-huh. had passed away, and I wanted to go to the viewing. And I knew I needed to get cleaned up and get in a suit, so we went to Carrie's house where I could take a hot shower. I took a shower, changed my clothes, and while Jeannie was in the bathroom, I just went and laid down on the couch. And I closed my eyes, and... While my eyes were closed, I remember I was in this place, and uh, I, I can't give you a lot of details about it because I don't remember it. I just remember it was like a really big room, and there were all these people, and they were all looking at me, and as I looked over them, I recognized a bunch of them as being people that I'd known in life that had passed away before me. Your mom. And my mother was there, and my mother came out of the group and walked over to me and reached over and picked up my hand and held my hand. And everybody just was really smiling and beaming and tickled to see me, you know, like they were welcoming uh-huh. me there. And, uh, and about that time, I heard Jeannie say, Neil, wake up, come out of it, wake up. <laughs> and I, and I, and I started to pull out of it, and I really was kind of resentful that I had to leave. You know, I wasn't angry, but I just was kind of, I don't really want to go. But I, but I came right out of it. And then she told me this story about how I would turn ghastly gray, and I wasn't breathing, and she couldn't get a pulse on me. And, and she's a, being a, an ER nurse. And uh, I, in uh, intensive care nurse training, I would think she could find a pulse. Now, how did that to. change your attitude about uh, mm-hmm. worrying about death or wondering about death or to fear it or anything? I never really have ever feared death, but it became much more so. I, I don't fear it at all, you know, I, not even a little bit. You were really glowing yeah. when you talked to me about it. Yeah, yeah. You felt- said, you said, Ken. This is a big deal. I'm not worried about it a bit, you know. I, when it comes, it comes, you know. I think there's something morally wrong with us hastening it. Because there is a purpose. I, I really believe there's a purpose and a function in life. Mm-hmm. That, that, you know, like if you read Pilgrim's Progress and other works like that, it gives you the impression that you're on this path and there are certain things along the path that you need to pass to be complete about this life. So to cut it short just because you don't want to go anymore or you're tired of the headache of it is uh, is morally wrong. I think no matter what comes, you cope with it. You're, you're not, you, you don't really ask how you come into this world and you don't ask how you go out. Uh, I thought about if got really bad, would I want to end my life, you know, rather than put up with all the suffering, but the suffering, pain, is as much a part of the life as pleasure is. And the only reason why everybody's 
so desperately wanting to get out of the pain part is because they think that some, they have a thought in their mind that somehow or other they shouldn't have to feel it. If you accept the fact that it's just part of living, then uh, yeah. uh, then you just go on, you know. And I think you've got to do this thing right mm -hmm. and get through it right, you know. And and uh, but I'm not afraid of dying. It's going to happen, and when it does, it does, you know. I may live to be very, very old. I may not. I don't know. But it doesn't really matter as long as I've completed what I'm supposed to do while I'm here, you know.